In this skill video, I'll be demonstrating how to make sense of contradiction generators. Contradiction generators are one of the most important skills, especially for derivations where you are only allowed to use the basic rules. What I mean by that is you're not allowed to use the derived rules that let you al uh, that allow you to manipulate negations. So in this, I'm going to demo a sort of full proof where I'm making use of a contradiction generator. And this will sort of help uh, in terms of just understanding what to look for and uh, to incorporate some other skills. And here I'm going to look at a second example, which is sort of contrived where I'm just pretending that it happens in the middle of the proof. There's really no difference between these two examples in terms of how to apply contradiction generators. I just want to make it clear that sometimes you'll see them up here in your premises, but sometimes you'll see them in the middle of a proof and you really want to flag them and identify them. So the first thing to point out is what I mean by a contradiction generator. What I mean by a contradiction generator is when you have a statement that the main connective is a negation, but it's actually the negation of something. So it's not just, say, this negation P over here. The negation P, this isn't a contradiction generator because P is just an atomic. What you really need is the negation of a molecular, in this case, P and Q, and that's what a contradiction generator looks like. Now, if we had our derived rules like De Morgan's, we could sort of blow that up and this derivation would be very easy, but I'm pretending that we don't so that we can really get to know what a contradiction generator is. Now, I'm going to proceed with the proof, show negation P, and by show line breakdown, I get P from assume ID, and that's fine. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm stuck. Clearly, I'm not stuck. There's actually things that I can do, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Instead, I'm going to pretend that the first and only thing I see is that this first premise is a contradiction generator. Now, a contradiction generator, the reason why I call it that is because I know that when I'm doing a derivation, even if I don't have an AID out there, whenever I'm doing a derivation, if I get a contradiction, I know that a contradiction immediately means that I can close a show line and say that I did an indirect derivation. So if I wanted to show negation P, it would suffice to get any contradiction. Lots of people think that the contradiction would need to be with this line, uh, but that's not true. In fact, rarely is it with this line, this AID. You just need to find a contradiction anywhere. So if I know that this is a contradiction generator, the reason why I call it that is because if I just had P and Q, if I just had what was in the green somewhere down the line, like dot, 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 if I had P and Q, that would mean that I actually have everything that I need to contradict uh, this first premise and my proof would be over. So given that, that is a clue. A contradiction generator is a clue that what I really want is just to find P and Q because if I succeeded, it would contradict with premise one and I'd be in business. Now, whenever I have a something like this, I do a bit of proof structure and that tells me I need P, Q on their own and to get up here, I would need to adjoin them. So this is what I'm looking for, P as well as Q. Now, fortunately, I have P on line two. So a big check mark there. I can even say I found it on line two just in case uh, I'm confused. And now I know all I need to do is find Q. Well, if I didn't know how to get Q, again, I'm just pretending I don't know, this is a nice clue on what to do. I can now insert a show line that says show Q, and I can do negation Q as an AID. A lot of the time you'll see me do a move like this in a derivation, and it seems like magic. Like how did I know to show Q? Well, the answer is I probably applied a contradiction generator with some proof structure to really help me. So now that I have this not Q from the assume ID, I can immediately modus ponens here uh, and I get T and that is premise two uh, line four modus ponens. And I'm just gonna put uh, the negation T here you don't need to do this, but I actually really like doing it, uh, stacking the um, contradiction right next to each other. There is one scenario where you do need to do that. I'll explain that in a future video. And when I have this, I can just say 5, 6, ID, and I've shown Q. Now I can go back here and say, ha, huh, I did this. That's a check mark. I did this in line 3, which means I'm good to go. I now know that I have line 2, I have line 3, 
and I can adjoin them to get P and Q. And I read that right off of my proof structure, essentially a set of instructions that I left for myself. Now that I have P and Q, why did I want that? Well, I want it because now, if I have this negation P and Q, uh, I can put down premise 1, and I can say that, as well as line 8, is an indirect derivation, and any contradiction suffices to show negation P. Now clearly I did this in some weird convoluted way. It doesn't matter. The point of this derivation is to demonstrate how to identify a contradiction generator and why it's useful. It's useful because it tells you what you need and that telling of what you need supplies you with this show line. Now let's take a look at this example over here. This is not a full derivation, so I'm not going to actually complete this. I'm just going to highlight the fact that this can also occur in the middle of a derivation. So sometimes I'll get a line like this which is negation, and it's the negation of something, and I immediately know when I have the negation of something, huge alarm bells should go off, I should flag this line as important, and I should note to myself that this is of course a contradiction generator. So what I want is I want the inside, the unnegated inside, and I want x or y. Now again, I do show line breakdown, and show line breakdown says, well, I need x or I need y. And if I get one of these things, I'll add the other. But clearly, based off of what I have in the derivation so far, it seems that I should shoot for x. So all I need is x. And of course, this is really nice because now I immediately know I can write show x and proceed. Now let's pre pretend that I took some lines and succeeded. And I showed x because I used some premises or some other things. It doesn't really matter. Now I know by my proof structure map that I can just write a side notes anywhere that all I have to do is add, so I get x or y, and that is line 11 because the show is crossed off, so I can use it. So it's line 11, addition, and then that immediately contradicts with line 10, and I'll do it all in one line to save some writing. 10 id, boom, whatever show line was up here is now crossed. So this is an example of what it would look like in the middle of a derivation. And again, it doesn't matter. Whenever you see the negation of something, it's a contradiction generator. And a contradiction generator, the second you have one, look to use it as often as you can so you can close subderivations and hopefully your actual full derivation.